Many building designs utilize a structural grid and luckily in Revit we have a structural grid tool. Just before I show you how to create the structural grid I just want to show you a really powerful feature of structural grids in Revit and that is the fact that they are 3D planes in their own right which means they stay coordinated between different views. So a very simple example here We've got a, a simple building with four walls and I've put four structural grid lines in place in plan. Now you can think of those in our 3D Revit world as 3D planes. So we're looking down on those planes, we've cut through them at the moment. Next to that view I have a section open here, that is the part of the section line which is generating that view. So here is our section and you can see the same four structural grids um, standing up if you like in our 3D model world so you're seeing them end on as they're cut through so if this was a, a 2D CAD system such as AutoCAD you would typically draft out your structural grid in plan and then you would project these up to work out where they need to be in your sections and your elevations so really what I'm pointing out here is you don't need to do that in Revit you just place them in whatever view is easiest to uh, to define them and they will automatically appear in all other associated views and more importantly they will stay coordinated so if for example your structural engineer tells you that uh, grid line A needs to move over towards B we can select it here Remember our temporary dimensions we saw in the last unit, you can use those if you know the exact dimension it needs to move over by. We can quite simply just drag it over by for the purposes of this example and notice how it immediately updates in the other view. Just like many elements in Revit, that automatic coordination between views is a really powerful feature um, cuts out many many mistakes um, because you don't have to manually go through each view in your project and make sure everything lines up and is coordinated because Revit will handle most of that automatically for you okay let's look at how we create structural grids within Revit I've got a brand new blank project open here so if we go to the architecture menu and we look along towards the end of the ribbon to the panel called datum we see the grid tool keyboard shortcut GR so select grid now it's a two click operation first click place the start of the line and second click to place the other end let's just take a quick look at what Revit has produced so here is our grid line this is the 2D graphical representation of it it's got a bubble or a grid head by default at one end and it's got a reference so by default Revit's going to name or number the first grid line number one you can change that to whatever you need and Revit will follow the sequence that you set it to and I'll show you that later on in the unit let's just click back on there so we've selected the grid line just take a look at some of the the parts that make it up so we've talked about the grid bubble we've got a tick box there which basically decides whether the bubble is shown at this end or not so it is here likewise we've got a tick box at the other end if you prefer to have your references on both ends of the line we've got elbows which we can add exactly the same as we saw in levels earlier in the course and we've got a little control grip there to modify the length of the line again exactly as we saw in principle with levels earlier on so let's go ahead and create more grids now various ways of adding more grids to your design you can simply draw more in so select the grid tool again remember 
those alignment lines from the last unit that's them in play here so it's aligning up it's suggesting that we'd probably want to align the next one with the previous one it'll do again that at the top so we can keep adding them like so cancel out there we can use the copy command so if we select one and I'll be covering the detailed use of the copy tool later on but just for now to show you that you can copy these cancel out of that so we've just seen how Revit automatically numbers or references these grid lines as you put them in but what if you want to put your own reference system in we can easily change the numbering the naming simply by selecting a grid line and once it's selected you can click on the reference itself and you can change it change that to A likewise select that one B and so forth and finally D and what you will find is that when you create additional grid lines you will notice that Revit automatically follows the new sequence that you've created so hence in this example it's put in E and F automatically and you'll find that feature i.e if you change the naming or numbering that Revit will pick up on that you'll find that time and again in Revit things like doors, windows, uh, grid lines, levels really neat feature again saves you having to go and manually change these so decide on your reference system at the start so if I go back now and do my horizontal grid lines I can now change this to 1 come back to grids and you can see it's now following this sequence I started at 1 for the horizontals and Revit is numbering these sequentially as we'd expect the only proviso with these references the, the, the letters or the numbers is that each one must be unique as you'd expect so if for example I tried to change this one here to 4 I'd get an error message saying that 4 is already in use so each one must be unique in the project we'll look very briefly before at changing the length of the grid lines but I'll just do that again now and go over it in a bit more detail so let's select grid line C you'll notice two open circles one at each end of the grid line those are the control grips for changing the length so if you very carefully put your cursor over one of those hold your mouse button down you can drag that accordingly notice the padlock symbol there that means that by default with that padlock as it is when you move this grid line length the rest of them will follow and you can see they've got the alignment line there Revit is assuming that you'd probably want to keep all these in line so it looks neat on your drawing there may be instances when you want a particular grid line to either lengthen or shorten and not affect the others simply click on that padlock to unlock it now you're free to move a particular grid line independent of the others we looked at adding elbows into our levels uh, earlier on in the course and if you'll recall the reason for doing so was to do with view scale if you come down to certain scales for particular views you may find as in this example here that the information starts to overlap 
So if we select that first grid line, we've got the option to add an elbow. Remember it's that little sort of chevron icon there near the end of the line. If I click on it, it adds an elbow in, or a crank if you like. The, the, the line is now cranked and there's a little grip there on the elbow. So I drag that over. And you can see just as an example between grid lines A and B, i.e. there's no overlap now, we've cranked the head of A over to the left. So depending on your view scale, you may need to add those elbows just to stop all this information overlapping. Each grid line typically consists of a single line or segment but there's nothing stopping us creating multi-segment grid lines in Revit. So I'll do that now. So remember, architecture, the datum panel, grid, select grid there. And before you do anything else, you need to switch on multi-segment on the ribbon. So just click on it there. Now you are free to draw your grid line comprised of multiple segments. When you're happy with the grid line, so I'm going to just have three pieces in this example. Remember the use of modify just to cancel out of drawing any more segments. Hit the green tick up here. Now the green tick and the red cross signify sketch mode in Revit, what we call sketch mode. You will see this time and again during this course when we come to do roofs, floors, ceilings. So I'll go over this in detail. But just for now, just worth noting that the sketch mode here allows you to draw those multiple segments and then you are selecting the green tick to say that you've finished in sketch mode and you want Revit to go ahead and create the grid line. So the grid line is now created with the bubble on as you'd expect. The rest of the features are as before, so we can adjust the length of the line, we can put an elbow in it, we can change the value. Typically at the intersections of grid lines we find structural columns. In Revit it makes it very easy to add structural column components to these intersections. So if I go to architecture, column, I can choose either architectural or structural column. I've got a dedicated unit on columns coming up later in the course, so don't worry too much about these elements themselves, but just to show you how they're used with our structural grids. So select structural column, if I zoom in, you can see there's a structural column shown in plan on the end of my cursor. The thing to note here is that Revit automatically snaps to the grid lines and also to the intersections because it's a BIM system and these are, if you like, semi-intelligent elements. It knows that columns are normally found on grid lines, hence it can form that relationship. So I can very quickly place my columns onto the intersections. I can do that manually as I've just done across each intersection but there's a really neat feature to do it very quickly across multiple intersections. So with columns still selected if we look up onto the menu, we look along the ribbon, towards the end we can see the option at grids so I click on that and quite simply I just select all the grids that I'm interested in and Revit will work out all the intersections. So if I fence everything there, you can see that Revit is offering me those positions in grey, with grey sort of columns there at every intersection that it's found. If I'm happy with that, hit the green tick to finish and it's now placed a column at every grid line intersection. So cancel out of creating any more columns. And the other neat feature is that once we've put columns at those intersections, 
Revit assumes that we would want to keep those columns in place at those intersections which means that if we do make adjustments to the structural grid those columns follow accordingly. However if you do have a column that needs to be off grid and uh, typically um, in a lot of designs there's always a, a sort of rogue column that doesn't quite sit on a grid and it has to be adjusted you can just pick the column up and you can move it off grid so you've got a lot of flexibility Revit will try and keep all those columns in place as you need them to be or if you want to override that we've just seen you can simply pick up a column and shift it off grid yourself and that completes this unit to get the most out of this training material, please take the complete course online at bimscape.com. Here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point, you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.